When Epcot opened in 1982, the World Showcase consisted of nine pavilions. Canada, United Kingdom, France, Japan, the American Adventure, Italy, Germany, China, and Mexico. Despite several expansion slots available, only two new pavilions have been added to the World Showcase, Morocco in 1984 and Norway in 1988. Yet that wasn't always the plan, as at least six different pavilions were announced by Disney to be added to the World Showcase. This is the history of the Council World Showcase pavilions. Alex Haley, I presume? You presume correctly. Welcome to Equatorial Africa. Well, thank you very much. Uh, am I too early? About a year, but it's always nice to see you. <laughs> I know you've been a consultant to uh, World Showcase since the beginning, so you must have a pretty good notion of what we will all expect to see when the African Pavilion opens. Well, for one thing, we plan to show the re beauty, the drama, the energy, the diversity of this amazing continent. Well, who should know better about that than the author of Roots, huh? In the 1982 Epcot opening ceremony, the Equatorial Africa Pavilion was officially announced by Roots author Alex Haley to be added to the World Showcase, set to open in 1983. The pavilion was to represent several Equatorial African nations in order to spread the cost of a pavilion. Within the pavilion itself, guests would have been able to experience a treehouse where they could view animals at a watering hole, the Heartbeat of Africa stage show telling Equatorial Africa's history via music, and Africa Rediscovered, a film about Africa's natural and cultural history. The pavilion was to be located between Germany and China and was signposted by a coming soon billboard. Despite having a ton of work done on it, the Equatorial Africa Pavilion ended up being cancelled when Disney struggled to find sponsors and wanted to avoid being linked to apartheid in South Africa. Whilst Equatorial Africa was the most advertised planned pavilion for World Showcase in 1982, another country that was announced to be coming to the park was an Israel Pavilion. A billboard advertised the future location of the Israel Pavilion in the park, whilst the opening day Epcot guidebook advertised what could be found in the Israel Pavilion including a large courtyard and an amphitheatre showcasing classical and folk music. The pavilion would have also included an exhibition featuring archaeological artefacts from the Jewish Museum in Tel Aviv. By 1984, the billboard advertising the Israel Pavilion was removed as Disney quietly cancelled the pavilion, afraid that recent tensions in the country would cause the pavilion to be a target for terrorism and protests. Therefore, the Israel Pavilion joined Equatorial Africa as another council pavilion. The third and final announced future World Showcase Pavilion in 1982 was the Spain Pavilion, which was also advertised on a billboard within the park as coming soon. The opening day guidebook claimed that this pavilion would have featured a film showcasing Spanish Edens and a ride about Spanish heritage, whilst a waterside restaurant would have served tapas. The Spain Pavilion was cancelled due to a lack of funding, as the original government that had agreed to fund the pavilion had been replaced by a new government who are no longer interested in funding a pavilion at Epcot. How'd you like to own one of these? This 50-foot ship was a gift to the people of the New World from Norway's Norsemen's Federation. And right now it sits in the Epcot Center World Showcase Lagoon. And right over there is Norway, the 11th member nation of the World Showcase, where you can hop aboard a Viking craft and sail down whitewater rapids through a mythical Norwegian forest populated by trolls and water spirits. And here's, here's the construction hat the guys wear over there as they work on Norway. Now, I'm just kidding, but it looks good, doesn't it? A Denmark pavilion was originally planned to be added to the World Showcase in the 1980s, but this was subtly advertised by bathrooms located between Mexico and China that architecturally resembled a building from Denmark. The bathrooms were added as the necessary plumbing had already been installed, so it made sense to open the bathrooms early and then open the Denmark Pavilion at a later date. At the same time, Disney had been negotiating with LEGO to become a sponsor of the Denmark Pavilion, where a replica of Tivoli Gardens would have been found and a boat ride past LEGO landmarks. As negotiations with LEGO fell through, the Denmark Pavilion was converted into a Scandinavian Pavilion, allowing the cost of a pavilion to be spread across several countries, including Norway. As Disney could only get Norwegian sponsors for the pavilion, they went ahead with converting the Scandinavia Pavilion to the Norway Pavilion, which opened in 1988. Epcot Center's World Showcase will soon welcome two new countries. The one most requested, the Soviet Union, 
and Switzerland with its thrilling Matterhorn Mountain bobsled ride. In the 1987 Disney Channel documentary Backstage Disney The American Adventure, a model of Epcot could be seen featuring two mountains that aren't part of today's World Showcase skyline. One of these mountains was the cancelled Mount Fuji roller coaster, planned to be added to the Japan Pavilion in the 1990s. The other mountain was a replica of a Matterhorn from Switzerland. Initially planned to open in 1985 between the Germany and Italy pavilions, the Switzerland Pavilion would have brought the Matterhorn bobsleds from Disneyland to Epcot, as well as a Swiss themed restaurant and shops. In 1990, Dateline Disney officially announced that a Soviet Union and Switzerland Pavilion would be coming to Epcot's World Showcase, but that was the last we had heard of the Switzerland Pavilion before it was cancelled. Over at Epcot Center, the Imagineers are hard at work on a space pavilion for Future World and a new Russia Pavilion for World Showcase, plus a thrilling ride through Mount Fuji at the Japan Showcase. In addition to the plans for all these new attractions, the Imagineers' drawing boards are chock full of concepts and ideas for entirely new theme parks. Also announced in the Dateline Disney video in 1990 was a Soviet Union pavilion, later renamed the Russia Pavilion in 1991. The Russia Pavilion was to be the major addition to the World Showcase in the 1990s, as part of Michael Eisner's Disney Decade, with concept art for the pavilion being released at an exhibition at Walt Disney World in 1991. In the northwest corner of World Showcase lies five acres awaiting the arrival of the newest pavilion for the global village, Russia. Condensing this giant land into a single pavilion is the task of the Walt Disney Imagineers, the creative team of artists, architects and engineers responsible for the design and construction of the Disney theme parks. Working from intensive research and consultation with Russian artists and advisors, the Imagineers are crafting a pavilion that will give the Epcot audience a brief journey into the heart of the Russian experience, from the ancient past to the ever-changing present. The following year, a full preview of what was to come to the Russian pavilion was revealed. A replica of St. Basil's Cathedral would have contained the main attraction for the pavilion, Russia for Bells of Change a large-scale animatronic show showcasing the history of Russia, similar in scale to the American adventure. A second attraction would have been Ivan and the Magic Pike, where guests boarded a magic troika and followed the classic Russian story. Outside of the two attractions, guests would have also found restaurants, shops and live entertainment in the main courtyard. After Disneyland Paris' lackluster opening in 1992 caused budgets on imaginary projects to be cut, the Russia Pavilion was ultimately cancelled. It's the six official cancelled World Showcase pavilions that Disney had announced and later cancelled. Whilst other countries have been suggested and rumoured at times, Epcot has not added a new pavilion to the World Showcase since 1988, in the last 36 years. If they did, what country would you have liked to have see added to the World Showcase? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below on what you want to see next on the History Channel.